Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be exploring the, hold on, wait for it, aha, the power module, which is a new module to JASP as of this, as of this one, right? Power analysis, let's open it up. It goes to this, it was made, oh, let's see if we can see who the author is here. Mm, a lot of contributors here. We've got uh, these, these lovely people. We're just gonna show them. Oh, I've gone through it and it's amazing, love, you all love you all this is perfect because i usually use g power for my power analyses i need and i teach with g power for my power analyses now i'm gonna probably see uh if there's a comparison between the two and expect those videos to be much later uh in the forecast but i will be doing some comparisons between these two modules and also uh there is a jamovi power analysis module which is limited to a uh, very common tests like t-test now there that is a limitation of the JASP tutorial, uh, of, of the JASP module, that it is limited, but we can still make videos. So in this video, we're just gonna do an overview of the module and then expect individual power analysis tutorials for each of the different kinds of tests, much like I did on my channel with G Power. And then maybe you can do some comparisons, but I will definitely do, do some comparisons in the future because I think this is a great thing to do depending on how you plan on doing your power analyses if you're a teacher of statistics what do you want to use like are you using jasp and you're like hell yes there's a power analysis module they don't my students don't need to download a new app that may or may not work or they may or may not understand and so that is what this little mini series is going to be about in jasp jasp 0.1 7.2 is where this new module is. So if you want to get your hands on this module, you got to download their newest version, and I'm sure it'll just get better as we go. So let's take a look at it again. To add modules to your top scroll bar here, okay, and being able to scroll on this, you can use a scroll wheel, which is so good. You can, if you've got a mouse like me that has a side thumb scroll wheel, it works a little bit better. But you add it by clicking on this plus button here all the way at the right, and it will be one of the uh, ones you can check. Here it is. It is in alphabetical order. Ooh, I had a new one, acceptance sampling. Ooh, I might, might have to look into that one, see if I can make a tutorial video on that. Anyways, uh, down here, power, it's again in alphabetical order, so you should be able to find it. You click it, it will add to your top bar. Again, um, the only thing that's not in alphabetical order is the R console, but the top bar here is also in alphabetical order for add-on modules. Of course, these seven are base JASP, so you don't actually have to have any of these. You could just have these seven. So that's how we'll do it, okay? So let's go into the power. You click it once and we'll open up the power. It will have a default ready to go for an independent samples t-test. There will be another video specifically about this thing. I just wanna go over many of the various ideas. I'm gonna bring up the uh, JASP help file, which is great. So we're gonna have that here off to the side, which is going to tell us uh, a little bit more about it. Module is based upon J Power by Richard Mori. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this link in a new tab and see, no, it did not open the link in a new tab. Uh, can I copy link address? There, there we go, let's, let's go here to J Power. So this is the GitHub for Richard Mori and his J Power, okay? And this, so this brings up um, all of the code necessary. I'm curious if this is a, this looks like, yeah, these are our code, right? So ANOVA, t-test, t-test, t, one sample t-test, okay. Um, and this one is paired samples t-test, and then this one is another paired samples t-test. Now this one's paired sample, I'm not sure what that one is. Okay, but anyways, this is, so this is the the actual code um, for it. Let's go back here, let's also bring this back, there we go. Okay, so uh, the module will come up with uh, all of this stuff with defaults already loaded for you, so you will have to change things if you're doing something other than what this basic thing is here. So. Let's go through it. Um, I love it too because all of the submenus are already collapsed. You already have a, a, an idea of where to go. Although this last one, data generation, is not necessarily something that you're going to be doing every single time. So let's go through this. Okay. So first, you want to choose your statistical test, which is important, right? And um, then you give parameters. And so the help file is going to explain parameters uh, for t-tests, but uh, expect, of course, different videos for um, for the other various tests. I do not know what these specific ones are, one sample variance and two sample variance, variance ratio. I think they might be ANOVA, but the language here is a little wonky to me. So um, yeah, I'll, I'm gonna have to explore that on my own. Um, so expect those to be the last ones uh, if they ever get made. So of course, the next video will be on an independent samples t-test power analysis. So I wanna calculate the sample size, which is what most power analysis are for, a priori power analysis, calculate the necessary sample size, right? So I wanna calculate, what are we calculating? Uh, uh, sample size, power, and effect size. Now this sample size is capital N, so it is the entire sample, right? And so if you're gonna be doing an independent sample t-test, it's gonna give you the entire sample 
but it will also break it down for you, right? So here we have N1 and N2. It gives you the whole thing, right? Which is great. Now, if you want to calculate post hoc power, so after you've done it, then you can um, grab what power your sample actually achieved. I might um, do this. I, I'm, I'm probably going to engage in this next year when I teach power, power analysis. So I have my students come up with a power analysis. Um, after we talk about sampling, we talk about um, doing a priori sample sizes, and they put those in their proposals for their research projects. And I think at the end of the research project, I think I'm going to have them calculate post hoc sample sizes. Okay. And then finally, you can calculate the effect size needed. And the reason why you can do all three of these things is because all three of these things and alpha, our criterion for a type one error, are all related. They all change based on the inputs of the other three, right? So if we can keep alpha the same, 0.05, then we can figure out um, one of these three by knowing the other two. So if we know three of the items, then we can calculate the fourth one. And we can do that all the time. Now, the other thing you could do is if you knew your sample size, you knew your power, and you knew your effect size, you could calculate what alpha really was. But nobody really does that because alpha is usually researcher controlled, right? 0.05 is usually our situation, okay? Now, uh, this module uses delta to represent the uh, parameter effect size, which uh, in t-tests is Cohen's D, okay? So that is the minimum effect size of interest is going to be the absolute value of Cohen's D. Now, this is a departure from the uh, from g-power because g-power specifically says for t-tests should just put in what D was or what you expect D to be. Um, this one is just representing as the Greek letter to represent the Greek letter for D, lowercase d, which is here delta. Um, now, uh, minimum desired power is one minus beta. One minus beta is the definition of power because beta is the probability of conducting a type two error. Ooh, boy, they messed up that one. This is a type two error, which is a false negative, not a type one error. Type one errors are false positives. That's what alpha is for. So type two errors is the probability of getting a false negative, saying um, uh, that there is no effect when the effect is actually present. And typically, that is about 20%. But really, we're only looking for one minus beta, which is the inverse of that. Okay, one minus beta is typically conventionally 0.8. Now, both G power and what I uh, see here with, uh, with, with the JAS power module <laughs> is that they actually want to push you a little bit higher than convention, maybe find a little bit more power, maybe measure a few more people in your design, in your sample, to at least achieve that 90 or, or, or 80, which is convention, okay? And then um, because we are looking for sample size, that's not going to be, uh, that's gonna be grayed out. But if we change this to power, for example, power is grayed out, but sample size is bigger, okay? And as you can see, the graphs change. I'll get to the graphs when we, we change them. Oops. Sample size ratio is next. This is N1 divided by N2. Again, for independent samples t-test, this is really important. For the most part, my suggestion to anyone watching this, my suggestion is to leave this as one. And it will only be available for independent samples t-tests only. To leave this as one, because if you are trying to calculate your sample size, your a priori power, okay, the idea here is that you want your groups to be equal to be robust against violating unequal variances, uh, heterogeneity of variance, right? You want homogeneity of variance between your two groups. And the best way to achieve that is to have equal group sizes, okay? And that is not to say that these groups are equivalent. That's another issue that these equal that these groups are equal that's what you want here right so i i would suggest leaving this at one now if you are doing a different calculation of power and effect size then you might need to change that based on your uh your actual data and you would re represent that if group one was bigger than group two then this would be a number greater than one if group one was less than group two then this would be a number less than one okay so that's how you do that uh, then our uh, alpha is the type 1 error rate. Yeah, so somebody just needs to add another uh, Roman numeral, uh, an I there, right? So type 1 error rate, false positive, okay? And then the alternative hypothesis is either one-sided or two-sided. Now, most researchers today will tell you to do a two-sided test for t-tests and other um, distributions that are symmetrical around zero. Of course, R, uh, Pearson's R, um, T related in that way. So you want to leave it as two-sided because it's a more conservative test, right? You're not making grandiose statements. Um, you're not going to be changing too much. Uh, and, you know, it's just a better idea. Now, you could change it to a one-sided hypothesis if you have a directional hypothesis and you're really certain about that one. I recommend, you know, do what you can. It's fine, right? Do what you can. It's fine. Now, 
that's what you're going to input here, right? And then you can get plots. You don't actually have to do plots or data generation because you're going to get all of this output here, right? And so the display power contour plot, that's what this is. Include a power contour plot in results. See output for detailed explanation. We'll go to that one in just a second. Power curve by effect size. Again, output. Power curve. See output. Power demonstration. And then explanatory text. Uh, I guess you'd have the power demonstration and the explanatory text. Well, cool. It gives us the explanatory text for this one. Let's do power demonstration. Let's let's see what that looks like. Yeah. All right. Okay. And then power curve by n. There we go. Yeah, buddy. Okay. So let's take a look at the output. Okay. So the table, the a priori power analysis table, table shows us the statistic, which is the sample size that we need. So 86 and 86 for our two groups here. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this in this video. Okay. We've got our Cohen's D as a 0.5. And so the reason why the, it's giving us 86 and 86 is because with 0.9 power, 0.05 alpha, and a Cohen's D of 0.5, which is a uh, medium effect size that these are our outputs for sample size. Okay. This table changes when you are trying to uh, uh, do power or effect size. Okay. And it gives you the actual power of 0 0.903, which is a calculated value. Okay. We would need a sample size of 86 in each group to reliably with a power greater or that of equal to 0.9 detect an effect size of absolute value of cones D greater or equal to 0.5. Assuming a two-sided criterion for detection allows for maximum type one error rate of alpha equals 0.05. So awesome. This, this is great because you know what? You can highlight this text and highlight this text, plop it into uh, a with a couple of changes, of course, I, I don't think the absolute value of delta necessarily needs to be there, but you could take this text and put it into a report at any level, at any level, undergraduate, graduate, postgraduate, right? Post-professional. So, so good. Okay. And so then the next table is showing you the power by effect size. What would happen to the uh, power? Just remember, this is a power analysis. What would happen to the power if we are changing delta or Cohen's D? OK, so if it ends up being a small, if a smaller effect size, right, uh, less than, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.8 is, is the convention for Cohen's D, right? So if we start falling into the smaller effect size, power to detect that with this particular setup, we're going to likely miss it, right? And give you a description, OK? Um, now, if the, and then you can see some breakdown here uh, of that, um, and you can see here that if it's just, just a little bit bigger, according to our inputs, we're almost surely going to detect it, which is great. That's really, that's really fun, OK? So, it's a great teaching tool because it tells us, it gives us the range to be able to show students um, what is what, what happens with power when we change that. Um, and you can represent that a lot nicer by showing a power contour graph with different colors sh representing the different power levels. Okay, and you can see here 86 is represented and 0.5 is our hypothetical effect size, right? So we've got sample size and we've got effect size. Sample size group one is only displayed here because um, we asked for equal group sizes. Okay, the power contour plot shows the sensitivity of the test changes with the hypothetical Effect size and sample sizes in the design. As we increase the sample sizes, smaller effect sizes become reliably detectable. Conversely, if one is satisfied to reliably detect only larger effect sizes, smaller sample sizes are needed. The point shows the power of specified design and effect size. Perfect. Now you can um, reflect this power curve by effect size, right? So we put the effect size on the x-axis instead. Let's see, does that? No, it still just gets messed up there. And then we put power over here, and it tells us. Um, so if we put uh, the effect size is 0.5, and we bring it up here to 0.95. Okay, this is the curve generated for sample size. That's the curve for sample size. Okay. Power curve shows the sensitivity of the test and design for larger or larger effect sizes. If we obtained a sample of 86 in each group, our test would only be sufficient power at 0.9 to effect sizes of point of D bigger than 0.497. We're more likely to miss with power less than 50% effect sizes, right? So over here, as it said up here, right? So this table is showing you this, uh, sorry, this graph is showing you this table. Okay. And then finally, power by N. So here's our sample size again. Here's our power, uh, power by N. Oh yeah. Okay. That's the effect size contour, right? So here we have another curve. Okay. So here's our 86 and we go up here and that's 0.95, I guess is what we did for our power. So there you go. And then here's the power demonstration. So this is our, um, probability density. These are our curves for our two samples, right? So if we assume that, um, the two are, separated by a distance of 0.5 standard units or half a standard deviation, right? So here we have 0.5 standard deviation, and here's our, our, our comparison, right? So there are two groups in our independent samples, right? Figure above shows two sampling distribution, sampling distribution of the estimated effect size of zero, right? Nothing changes. And when um, Cohen's D is 0.5, both assume a sample size of 86 in each group. So this is going to change depending on the inputs over here. So that's how you do that. Okay, so that is the input and output part of the power up module. Now, what is this last one? Data generation. Hmm. This is an interesting one. So if you really wanted to, you could um, do this by setting up what your uh, means are, right? 
So mean of x bar two. Let's let's go ahead and change this to. Uh, I'm I'm assuming that this is in uh, standard deviation units. And the interesting thing about this is that there is no uh, there's no information about it, which is a bit of a bummer. Data generation, okay, um, in the help file. So we're gonna close the help file. Uh, I'm just gonna see what happens here. I'm just gonna see what happens here. Um, effect direction. We're gonna say x bar one is less than x bar two. Sure. Uh, yeah. And then we're gonna save the generated data set. Let's see what happens. Let's save it to my, um, uh, why is my desktop no longer in my, let's do that. I thought I got rid of that. Oh no, that's the new one. <laughs> uh, video test. Let's save that. Let's save. And then we save it. Okay. Um, there it is. Okay. Let me open up this in Excel. Okay. So this is what it did. It generated 172 individual data points for group one and group two. Oh, that's awesome, right? So it split it in half, 86 by 86. I see what it did. It follows your sample size here. So you can generate data that is following what you've set up here. I see what happened now. Okay, very cool. All right, so group one and group two are 86 each, right? And these are your dependent variable numbers. Okay, so obviously I made some random stuff up. Like <laughs> the mean could have been much different. <laughs> You could have made whatever you wanted, but this is how you can make up data. Now, don't do it fraudulently. This is for this is a teaching tool. No fraud, no frauds, no no frogs. But let's say you uh, run a research and uh, stats course in your uh, in your school, and it's just a pain in the ass, a pain in the ass to have the students run their own studies. You have far too many people. You can cre have them create data sets with these properties, and then run the statistics on this can data, and then that way they can write uh, reports. They don't have to run data, they don't have to do IRBs, they, they just can run data analyses on this created data from this power console, power module. That is really cool, that is really cool. So what it does is it creates the data based on its uh, power calculation. I think, that, I think that's amazing. So that is the overview for the new power module in JASP 0.17.2. If you have any comments, suggestions, questions or feedback, please leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video.